We're talking today about stress and what chronic stress can actually do to your body. So this is super important. Not only can I tell you from a physical therapy standpoint what I've seen in my clients, but what I have experienced personally when it comes to what stress can do to a body and how we can try to break out of that. So let's talk first about what stress is, what happens. We are developed so that we have this fight or flight response. So let's say back in the day we were being chased by a bear. You wanted that fight or flight response, right? You want that high cortisol level to kick in. You want to be able to run fast. You need to have your blood restricted just to the primary muscles that you need. And you need to get to that cave and to get to safety as quickly as you possibly can. That's a good thing. We want that response. And then in theory, when that threat is gone, when the bear goes away, the stress goes away, our cortisol levels come back to normal, our breathing comes back to normal, and we move on with our life. That's the way the fight or flight response is supposed to work. What happens, especially in life nowadays, is we have that fight or flight response to a stress whatever that stress may be. The thing is, typically it's not actually a life or death situation anymore like it was back with the bear with our ancestors. It is more things like um, a big move or some email that we get or something we see on social media or in my case, when March 2020 hit and we have a big stressor that comes on. Now, first I wanna say all of those things are real and relevant, okay? It does not matter if you perceive that stress to be big or small in comparison to someone else. All that matters is how your body responds to it, okay? They all count, they all matter. So we have that hit of cortisol. So what happens when a threat, a perceived threat or a stress comes to our life? we do go into fight or flight. So we get a really high cortisol level, that's a hormone in our body, we get a high one, we start to, again, our breathing can change, but a lot of things change physiologically in our body, which again, can be beneficial short term. So if you're dealing with a sudden stress, something you suddenly have to deal with, like a project that has to be done that day, Sometimes it can actually help, right? It focuses us. It can even help your creativity. You can get that thing done. You have a burst of energy. Sometimes it can even help with a hard workout. That's not a bad thing. The problem occurs when we stay there, when we stay in that fight or flight response, when we stay in that high stress level for a long period of time, we are not meant to be there. We're not built to be at that high, high level of stress for a long time. And in this day and age, and especially I will say for me, since March of 2020, it was a high stress level that stayed there, right? We have this perceived threat of whatever it may be, and then we add things to it. So what happens is we might add really hard workouts. That's not a bad thing, but it is a stressor to the body. We might start to lose sleep that's a stressor to the body. We might start to see some problems in our relationships because we are stressed about something at work or something in the world. It carries over into our relationships. That causes more stress. So you can see how we start to layer this on ourselves. And there is research that shows all the detriments that can happen when we have a high level of stress for a long period of time. The first thing I wanna say is it's not just in your mind, okay? That I have heard from so many people who feel like, gosh, just I saw a doctor for pain and they said it's just in my mind. What happens is stress may start in that way, but it does show itself with physical symptoms. So what can happen with that long-term stress is we can start having insomnia, we can have appetite changes, we can have problems with our digestion, right? If you start to have those tummy troubles, we can see it in skin changes, we can see unexplained weight loss or weight gain and bloating and so many things like that. I will say as a physical therapist, seeing people over the last two years virtually, I have seen a lot of people who've had things like tennis elbow pop up and tension headaches and things like that that are coming up supposedly out of the blue, but really we can look back and see that they could possibly be related to this idea of high levels of chronic stress. Then you can also have 
emotional changes, we know about that, right? We can start to really doubt ourselves. We can start to feel frustrated. We can start to feel anxious. And then we can even have some cognitive changes like memory changes and brain fog. And all of that we know from research can be caused from this high level of stress, high levels of cortisol that last for a long period of time when they aren't meant to. So the first thing I want you to do is give yourself a big hug right now and say, it's okay. Give yourself grace. Give yourself patience as always. That's always our lesson here. There's no point in beating yourself up about this because it is a true thing that you are experiencing. Okay. So accept that and acknowledge it and give yourself a big hug and say, we can do this moving forward. The next thing is if you need help, please get it. Okay. Only, you know, if you were at that point, but if you are at any point at all that you feel like you need outside help, please, please get it through a therapist, through your doctor, wherever you need to go to access help. Okay. That's really important. So the final thing here is to find some ways in my experience, this is what I had to do was find some ways to get myself down out of that chronic state. And one thing I want you to be aware about that is our bodies do get used to being there. So even if we start to come down from it, sometimes our body's like, wait, 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 I want another hit of that cortisol. I'm used to living there in that high kind of state of energy. I need to go back up. I don't know what to do with myself to just sit in this chair. (laughs) That's what I found. I finally had a moment to breathe. And just sitting was hard. I felt like I needed to be reading the news or on my phone or doing something. It's been really hard to be able to come back down to that status quo place. So be aware of that and find some ways that work for you. So what I had to do was really prioritize a couple things. I picked sleep as one. In this crazy time of virtual school and lockdowns and everything, I was working, my husband and I both, we'd get the kids to sleep and we would work until midnight or 1 a.m. every single night, up at six with the kids to do it all again. I knew in my gut I could not sustain that. It had been a year and a half, it was not sustainable, it wasn't good for me anymore and I was on the brink of breaking from lack of sleep and stress. So one thing I did was really made sure I prioritized sleep a few nights a week at least. I would go to bed at the same time the kids did and that was it. And now it's become a little more of a habit. So that's one thing that worked for me. Another was I actually, and you guys have heard me talk about this, I worked with someone to get my hormones tested to make sure that I was doing everything I could on that side of things, especially after my hysterectomy, to get my hormones in a really good level. And then I really worked on boundaries, saying no to new projects. And that's a hard thing, especially if you work for yourself or you're an entrepreneur, or if in any way there are things in your life that depend on saying yes to people, or if you're a people pleaser, it can be hard to say no. But I really prioritized the projects I had in the works. I really prioritized Unlimited and my members. I really prioritized great workouts here on YouTube. I prioritized certain things in my work life and said consciously, I'm going to say no to new projects for now so I can get my feet back under me and then move forward. And I can say after six months of doing those things consciously, right? I reached what I felt like was a breaking point. I really focused on sleep. I really focused on not saying yes to every new project that came my way. I worked on getting my hormones back in line and then just really trying to enjoy some present quiet moments with my family. After six months of that, I feel so much better within my body. It doesn't mean I'm not stressed right now, but it means that it's at a level I can control. I can find those quiet moments. I don't feel anxious all the time. And that is what has helped me personally. We are all different. So find what works for you. This is not medical advice whatsoever. This is just me telling you a story of what helped me and helping you understand what stress can do in your life and to your body physiologically so that you can start to take steps to get out of that chronic state of fight or flight because you deserve more, you deserve better, and you can find that better place one step at a time. All right, I hope that helps and I'll see you soon. 
And thanks so much for stopping by. Remember, subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified every time a new video comes up. Like and comment on this video and let me know what you thought. You can also always come over to jessicavalantpilates.com to find all the resources I have for living a healthy lifestyle, including full-length workout videos, healthy recipes, and a community I would love for you to be a part of. So I'll see you there.